Welcome to Expert Strategies. Joe Wellu, how are you? Hey, Kelly, doing well. How are you doing? You know, I'm fine, but I, I want to be Uberized. That just sounds like a spectacular thing. <laughs> That's a sexy phrase, isn't it? <laughs> I love it, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that word's used so much right now in industries, but it's it's super relevant. If you think about the impact that if you, a couple companies that I reference as I look at the mortgage and real estate business, you know, the entire taxi industry was uh, essentially turned upside down and, and made irrelevant within three years. And then you have Airbnb, who all of a sudden, uh, overnight, uh, became the largest hospitality in, uh, company in the world. And if you look at those things, like Airbnb, for example, like why didn't Marriott build that technology and, and evolve to that? That's a good right? question, yeah. And why didn't some of the cab companies put that together and think about it? And I look at that, and I think those are lessons that we have to learn in our industry, in mortgage and real estate. And I, I see companies taking a lot of action towards uh, Uberizing, if you will. And I, I think there there's a lot more action that needs to be taken. So I'm um, happy to talk through some of those things today. Yeah. I mean, it's almost in a way, when you, I love what you said a minute ago when you said, why didn't Marriott come up with the Airbnb idea? It's almost like, start thinking about who your competition is and become it because they're going to come at you one way or another, right? If, if technology can improve an experience for a customer, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yep. And it's going to iterate until the kinks are worked out. As as we know, software and technology, it is, um, it's, it's messy and it's painful to get through to true change. But if you're committed to it, the results are ridiculous. I mean, they're awesome. Yeah. And you know, it's funny when you say technology, a lot of, a lot of people, uh, at least in mortgage and real estate have gone more toward technology. They were sort of dragged by compliance and regulators. Mm -hmm. However, there's no turning back now. There's no, there's no turning back without a question. There's no turning back. And if I look at, we have a lot of conversations on a weekly basis with, uh, customers and other, other experts in the industry around this topic. And, the number one theme that you have to always be mindful of when thinking about how to Uberize your company is removing friction from the transaction, okay. from the buyer journey, from that transaction experience. And if you're if you're focused on auditing the entire process, so what it what does it look like? How does it feel? to do business with your organization. Mm -hmm. I know it's one thing as a company, we, we certainly are trying to improve all the time and could do a much better job with it. And I think every company out there has areas they could improve upon. But the core of Uber is it's easy to do business with them. It's painless. And you sort of are in control. Absolutely. But okay, but let's just say, and, and, and I love Uber, but if a loan by, by virtue of what it is, how do you take the friction out of having your finances scrutinized? Yeah. yeah how do you do that? Uh, it's messy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, okay. They, there are, number one, let me say that I, that I don't believe all of the technology is fully mature enough to truly Uberize, but I think there's a ton of incremental improvement that can be made with with current things that are out there today. Um, for example, there's point of sale applications and automation technologies that can be put into place that make it easy for me to connect my banking information. It also, I think, on on the other side of uh, of the coin, automating interaction and engagement and building trust with that customer is part of it because the the housing industry the those transactions are, they're a big deal. It's more meaningful to spend a half a million dollars or even a, even $200,000 on a new home than it is to take a $25 Uber ride. So you have to <laughs> define the differences. So yeah. there's more that's needed around engagement and relationship building. But then on, on the in analysis of the finance side, it's still messy, but there's, there's systems and technologies out there that'll let you allow the customer to connect their banking information, get a lot of that. We used to be faxing things back and forth, and then we'd be PDFing <laughs> things back and forth, right? Yeah. You remember uh, all the time, and it was a mess. And then you had 50 sets of documents, and so there's ways to clean all of that up. 
today. Yep. Uh, yep. There are systems that companies that, that we have alliances with and work with that are helping companies do that. And we certainly do it on, on the marketing, sales, and engagement side. But So there's definitely meaningful improvement that can be made now. You know, it seems to me like this, with all of the automation that can be done and, and things that the digitalization of the process, if you will, it almost does seem like if you can get a lot of that busy work off the plate of a producer, be it a mortgage loan officer mm-hmm. or a realtor, then it allows them to give the real TLC at those tough times where there's a credit ding and whatever. And and because prospecting always seems to suffer, if, if you know, it, when it you does. Busy. Uh, I, I get the opportunity to speak to a lot of groups of salespeople around the country, and I always ask the question, you know, how many of you guys want to spend more time doing technology inside of a computer or laptop or whatever? And the answer is almost always no. What they really love about the business and what makes them so good at what they do is their ability to go out and build that relationship with that customer, make that customer feel good because it's such a a big transaction. So if I can make the experience more painless uh, by automating some of those other processes. And if I think about automation around my prospecting and, and lead conversion and all of that part of the business, that does allow me to remove friction from that part and then focus a lot of my energy and resources around making sure that customer is super happy. You know, that's really funny. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. It's it's the more technology that you can use and, and improve upon allows you to get of way more of the human element, really. It, yeah, it does. And I, I don't I do not believe that the human element is going to be completely removed from the real estate transaction. Uh, some people argue with me on this, but it's an emotional enough deal that un- until you've sat at a closing table or tried to get to a closing table with a buyer and a seller uh, and experienced those emotional highs and lows, um, I, I don't. I think it's really hard to to understand unless you've done that, right? And a lot of us have have, have been in those situations, so we get it. So I don't think you can truly take the human element out of the transaction. But what you can do is you can allow the consumer to do business with you the exact moment in time, that point of sale, when they're precisely ready and not before. And then you can make the process a much better and more fluid experience. So it feels more like ordering an Uber, if you will, or, or as we call uh, a transaction without so much friction. Okay. No, that makes sense. Well, you can't really touch on this aspect of real estate and mortgage without bringing in the famous group uh, of people that we always talk about, millennials. How do they fit into this whole thing? Well, they're they're really forcing companies to either innovate or die. I know that sounds brutal, but it's just the truth. If you look at organizations that believe business is going to just be uh, the same old same old and we can we don't have to innovate at all they're they're going to they're going to feel the pain of the millennials because the millennials are in the last numbers i looked at this year 2017 they are going to be the largest segment of home buyers uh, for the first time and what we have coming the size of their generation it's the largest segment of home buyers in american history yeah and they grew up with a screen in their hand they're used to instant gratification <laughs> and they're used to having frictionless interactions right yeah yeah. So, so again, you know, you're saying innovate or die, which is, I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's true. How a lot of people probably would argue with you in the industry saying a real estate transaction is a real estate transaction. Yeah. What could possibly be new and different about it? Yeah. I bet you disagree with that. I absolutely do. It's uh, let me tell you, it's still emotional. It's still a big transaction. So there's certain things that have not changed. But what what has changed is the customer journey has changed. The amount of data and information and knowledge and education the consumer has access to. It used to be they they needed that professional to find out what their credit score was. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I remember when our loan officers used to have to, we'd say, hey, we can get, you know, they can get your credit pulled. And now they have it on Credit Karma for free or yeah. on one of those apps. So the transaction is very different from where the point of sale starts. In fact, the, you know, now it's very much the open houses a lot of times are where that transaction starts happening uh, because they've, they've had no reason to contact anybody until then. They weren't ready. They've got everything at their fingertips. So um, it's not the same in that respect. Um, it, it certainly there's still 
the no question the need for that trusted advisor, that trusted expert uh, to be there when the time is there to transact. That's that's vital, and that's not going to change. But getting to that point, though. I've heard you say before, Joe, you really do need to speak to millennials differently and offer them an entirely different type of communication and no, information. You have to communicate and engage with them the way they want to be engaged with and communicated with. And part of that is understanding their preferences that they don't want to be, quote unquote, sold to. Mm-hmm. If you try to close them, sell them, give them BS marketing, they are going to hit delete and tune you out and uh, pretend like you did not exist. So you have to engage with them in an authentic way. Definitely authenticity is really important with the millennials. And you have to make sure, obviously, if they're interacting with you, that it's easy to find you online. It's easy to fill out an application. It's easy to upload their documents. It's easy to find you when they need you. So all of the processes around the transaction have to be without friction. They do not like friction when it comes to transactions. Okay, so to kind of wrap on the idea of Uberizing your business, it's removing friction, auditing the experience and the process that your customer has. And improving it. Improving it. Incrementally improving it constantly. Constantly. Ongoing basis, not a one-time thing. Using technology. Yeah, technology is, uh, I think, having, number one, a commitment to innovation and technology as a company is no longer an option. Mm. Uh, some companies believe that it is, and, and they're, they're going to get punished in the marketplace in terms of lack of business. So innovation and technology is no longer optional. You have to commit and play the long game, commit to it for long term. So whether you end up building these things in, in-house, which is another conversation, or you're, you're buying platforms and getting your foundation in place, it doesn't make much difference, but you just have to commit to it. I, sh- I shouldn't say it doesn't make much difference. It does depend dramatically cost-wise, but getting a foundation in place that is there that allow you to iterate and constantly improve your processes is crucial. Yep. And thinking millennial on that, on that same note. Yeah. And thinking what their, what their expectation is. I think always looking at the transaction from their, from their perspective all the way from, and it's not just the transaction, it's the entire journey. So it's from the first engagement they have with you through post-closing and referral. The transaction should not be a destination anymore. If you think about Uberizing, right, that's a long-term relationship. I have that relationship. There are more frequent transactions, but when I'm ready to transact, I'm ready to get that ride. I have that relationship there because they, you know, they're a click away. It should be the same feeling. You should have that same relationship, only even deeper uh, on the mortgage and real estate side. So when they're ready to transact again, they they are automatically thinking of you, and they know it's very simple to engage and do business with you. Well, and and instead of having to necessarily take that phone call at 11 o'clock at night, your technology can kind of be the buffer too, huh? It absolutely <laughs> can. And it can feel like there's certain things that are personalized that, that automation can help with. And so machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, all of those things are going to make giant strides in mortgage and real estate over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, we're investing heavily in, in building out those resources to help our customers. And uh, I think if you look at where that's going, it's going to help you uberize your company and particularly help you grow that share with the millennials. Absolutely. Another expert strategy, Joe. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Kelly.